Okay. We're now in another draft. Let's see what happened. Uh, the tiny ban, that's consistent. So is the other Titan, the Lich. The Grimstroke is able to be picked up in this one. And they didn't ban out the Sentinel. They banned out the uh, this Earth Spirit. Something a bit different. That's, a, that's the most key. <laughs> Try to funnel people away from my stream is my mods. Oh my god. I, I didn't realize Harumi was doing it. I feel bad actually. <laughs> uh, Someone actually did say it earlier on in the cast that I look a bit like Yapsil. And I guess that's why Samoski likes me because Yapsil is, is his favorite player. Anyway. We're now actually going to get into a bit of a more serious professional cast. Grimstroke. So Grimstroke, Lich was banned out, but they're going to take the Titan. So this is a strong combination in lane, just because you get the gush, and then you also ink spell people on top of each other. I do feel a bit bad ba bouncing around three matches. That's what you've got to do in the open qualifiers. Five seconds remaining. So, now eating into their reserve time is Boom ID. They've taken their four position with the task. What do they want for their five? We've seen a bunch of Grimstroke. Um, uh, sorry. But we uh, we have seen a bunch of Grimstrokes, but it's already picked up. I was thinking more about Jakiro. Forgive me, I am getting tired. Um, so maybe a Jakiro might be likely, or a Shadow Shaman. Oh, wow. But they're instantly taking the OD, knowing that there's no chance for the instant counter pick, and they will get to ban out the Pugna. OD, obviously very good versus this Tidehunter. Um, the low tack match is being covered by Dream League. Like, Radiant actual Dream, Dream League, League, the people hosting the tournament. Their stream has started. So I don't feel the need to cover that if their big official stream is covering it. Um, yeah, it, it, exactly. So that's why we're casting Boom ID versus WG. But don't worry about it. If you want to see that match, if you want to see that match, I will not be offended. I just want everyone to be able to see all the Dota that they want to be able to see. <laughs> Don't at me. So, Park ban out. That's interesting. I guess he's one of the mid laners who deal well with that world devourer. And are they going to ban the Pugna as well? I think the Pugna is someone you should ban if you're picking a note. It's just uh, such a good lane for those Pugnas. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. And they do finally ban out that Pugna, making this lane a lot more secure for this Outworld Devourer. Radiant team pick. And this is interesting. This is the new meta for 7.21. We've seen a whole bunch of lifestealers. He seems to be possibly the carry hero of the patch when it's appropriate. And I quite like the Grimstroke Lifestealer combination. Because, you know, Lifestealer, he just wants to stay on top of people feeding them with that Ink Swallow, giving him that movement speed. So, Queen of Pain versus OD. I'm curious about how this mid lane goes. Queen of Pain obviously did get her level 4 Shadow Strike buffed in this patch. That's something worth looking out for. 10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Shadow Shaman. And there is that five position Shadow Shaman that we suggested earlier. 
offers great control versus the Queen of Pain as well as the Tidehunter. Ten seconds remaining. So I think that's a really good pickup. So she won't just be able to Five blink away. You've got remaining. Hex. You have Shackles. They will be able to dish damage out into this Quop. So she's not going to have the freest game of her life, even if she does win the mid lane. Dire team pick. Shadow demon. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. This is an interesting pickup of the Shadow Demon. I think... I think it's got to be a four-position Shadow Demon. We have seen him gone, go off lane in this new patch with his buffs. But let's think about this. He has a disruption. Do they really need a save? I mean, if someone's shackled, you will be able to save them. So I guess that's a positive as well as the Hex. You can also... You can set up for the ink swell of the Grimstroke on top of that disruption. Also worth noting, Grimstroke, ink swell on the Queen of Plain as she blinks in. Radiant team back. Dark Sia. Uh, Slinky, please don't call me an idiot. Um, I've switched the game I am casting. So, like, there's no need to be, you know, freaking offensive. And actually, I think I'm just going to time you out. No need to be offensive in the chat. Ten seconds remaining. Five anyway. Seconds remaining. Let's have a look. Shadow Demon. And they pick up the Darks here. Okay, this is... um. We saw him round the edge of the last patch. But I haven't seen anyone pick him up today. I'm curious to see this Darks here go to work. Dire team ban. So they ban out the Troll Warlord. That's a good carry to go with this Outward Devourer as well as the Shadow Shaman. Offers you some really nice push because OD as a mid laner doesn't give you any of that physical damage versus towers. Luckily, Shadow Shaman with the wards gives you that, but you might Five want more push from your carry. And so what are they going to ban out? They need to ban a carry against WGU. Do you think they could have picked up Terrorblade or Luna? I mean, Shadow Demon Luna is a bit old school. But we are seeing more and more Luna with strength heroes like Tide. But maybe you just ban out Terrorblade. I don't think Terrorblade was hit that hard by the night. Dire team pick. Radiant team pick. Visage. Okay, boom ID. Um, I didn't see the Visage pick, but this means they're going to hit, have to hit a very early timing on the side of boom ID. Otherwise, you know, Visage, obviously one of those very timing dependent heroes. Ten seconds Shadow Shaman is going to help with that push, but still. Five seconds. I'm a, I'm a teeny bit worried here about this side of Beam ID. If they miss, you know, if they lose, like, let's say, two team fights in a row to, you know, good Ravages, I think it might just be over for the side of Beam ID. But let us see. We will find out. And they do pick up that Luna. I, uh, we got the right pick. They are going Shadow Demon Luna. What a ra retro draft by the side of WG Unity. I mean, the Warriors, the WG side, 
It's a lot more standard. I understand what's going on. This, you know, it's a carry visage. They really have to hit this timing. And I mean, Luna can, you know, cleave through the birds. Eclipse will, you know, destroy those birds. I mean, I think I give it to WG. I'm, I mean, feel free to tell me about who you think is going to win. But I, I'm just very afraid if Boom ID miss their timing. Obviously, if they come out of the lanes massively ahead, then Boom ID should have this. But if they miss their timing, it's going to be very hard for them to win. But as always, tell me in the chat who you think is going to win. Okay, we should be into this game in 13 seconds. Boom ID. They looked fairly good in the last game, but both teams made quite a few mistakes. I do like that hammerhead shark on the um, Eye Hunter, though. Oh, Velo. Anyway, we are now in... This game number two of this best of three, this is the lower bracket. So the loser of this will go straight to the lower bracket. Blessings upon no one will be eliminated at this stage. No, no, that's, that's the thing. This WG lineup, like, Blessings it has a very simple win warrior. condition, which is make it to 25 minutes. Without losing racks. But. Let us see what Boom ID can do. They must feel very confident with their Visage play. And I mean if they do try lane with the Visage. You know they'll be able to get him some good early kills. As well as some really good farm. <laughs> there will be pain. There will so be they pain. smoke forward towards the mid lane. Who has the mid lane ward? It looks like. Makoto gets to place his own ward. He needs to be careful of his smoke being broken by the... The quap. But they're not going to realize what went down there. On the side of Boom ID, they've successfully infiltrated the Radiant Jungle. But it looks like with this wraparound, all they're probably going to find is Velo. And he is very tanky, but hopefully with the Shackles as well as the tag team... He will be a gettable kill for you. They do... I'm pretty sure they do see him now. And Kazekatu, he's there with the tag team. He was looking away for a second on Velo. And that's probably going to be enough to kill him, even with the Aether Shock. And the Soul Assumption, level 1 for Furbion. So a nice rotation by this three-man unit here from Boom ID. The battle begins. Nico, Baby, and Felix Chabot, they're getting these runes, but in the top lane, it's the classic two for two rune exchange. And look at this. They knew Tide was top, and it looks like they don't want to put Fervian versus it. So he's actually transferring himself over to the bottom lane. To go versus this Luna versus the Shadow Demon. Interesting. They want the Darkseer Tide matchup, and they want their tri lane on tri lane. I'm curious to see how this works out, but with no one here by the with no one here by the side of Boom ID, just gonna be free farm and miss CS and experience here. Especially with the disruption, we talked about the ink swell on top of it, but the tag team not quite able to zone him back enough. Burbian taking a lot of damage from this, and they haven't been able to manage to get to near the creep wave at all. This visage being forced to pop the salve, and Luna gonna be very close to her level too. So this rotation, not going to pay off, at least in this early stage for the side of Boom ID. But they have their full try lane, so things should get a bit better now. Denied.
I feel this is where, I mean, we've caught first blood, but where all the action's going to be. It usually is on these try and try lanes. The spamming the ether shock, just getting that damage in. They do have level 2 on Nico baby, so he's able to get a point in that Lucifer. And now, we saw this before. Disruption on top of the Ink Cell. But look at this. He wasn't quite sure he was trying to zone people with Ink Cell. So he misses Fervian, and they've got so much damage with that tag team. Is he able to get in range for that Soul Assumption? He doesn't even need it. Able to get the kill with the right clicks here of Yokam. Okay, Kang. What is next up for you? I mean, back to the lane after suffering a bad death. Like, we saw his uh, indecision with the Inkswell. Like, he went this way when he should have been on top of the disruption, and it might have netted them the kill. OD managed to get it, the D ward mid, and it, look at this. Nothing to say. He's very low. The Makoto actually winning this mid lane. Something we didn't expect. Now, the Inksel actually on top of the disruption. But Kizetsu, he has the tag team. So all that damage. Oh my god, the Ether Shock. He just absolutely evaporated. Do the solo assumption plus the three people hitting into the tag team. And remember, he TP'd right back to the lane. He doesn't have a TP anymore. In this top lane, the Tide Hunter actually behind the Darkseer. Darkseer has the ability to just push those lanes as well as from the jungle thanks to his Iron Shells. And in this mid lane, Queen of Plane pretty damn far behind. <laughs> even though she has level 2 in the Shadow Strike. But as they get more levels in the Shadow Strike, they might be able to kill this. But uh, Tusk actually falls off to Kang. He tried to deny himself to the tower, but is kept caught. And over here, OD dies in the mid lane to nothing to say. What's... I guess he just died to the Shadow Strike over time. Wasn't able to out heal it. But this was the buff. If Caster doesn't reply, it's not live. You are watching a replay. Uh -uh. This is a replay. But look at that Tusk. He was out of mana and out of health. So he tried to deny himself. But caught up by Kang. And all the meanwhile. Nothing to say. Leveling this mid lane. But he doesn't have really that much mana. Taking a lot of harass. I'm sure he has a salve on his way out to him. On this bottom lane, they get disruption. Inkswell, this is what we've been seeing again and again. They do get the silence up at the same time, so the tag team isn't able to be popped. And with that looser beam, they roll forward. Tag team, do they have enough to take down Kang? It looks like they might with one more hit. Is he going to get it? No, he's able to walk away. Solo assumption from Fervian wasn't quite enough. Execute now. He's trying to get away. There is a mana on Nico, baby, for that looser beam. So with the salve, but three for three, this bottom lane is absolute carnage. I mean, Twitch is a video on demand platform, not a live streaming platform. Why would you guys expect any sort of game here to be live? Over here, are they going to go for it again? Tusk, he doesn't have level 3 yet. If he had the shards, they'd be able to keep people back. But level 3 is on Felix Chabot. Radiant's and who's going to hit level 6 Radiant's here first? The Quop a tiny bit behind inexperience. But look at that. He used the Astral Radiant's on the Quop. So he hasn't managed to dodge the Shadow Strike himself. And look at this level 3 Shadow Strike. It does so much freaking damage. And over here, they have the Shackles. They have the Tag Team. They're able to get the Rune. And they might even be able to get the kill. There is no Hex. And the East Shock, it's not going to be quite enough. They don't even waste the mana on it. So a 2 for 2 at these 5 minute bounties. But Furbian. On this Visage. Really isn't farming at that well. The Luna has a lot of denies. Regen rune pop for nothing else to say. He's going to try and get this Shadow Strike while on the Infants of Regen. And Astro Imprisonment on cooldown. So you're not able to Astro Imprison yourself to dodge the Shadow Strike. Which was the Don't one thing I thought OD out. might have had going for himself in this mid lane. Just look at it. He's already half health. And once he gets level... Level 4 in that at level 7. Just I don't know if OD can stay in this lane anymore. This is the power of the Queen of Pain. And why they picked it into that world of Arrow. <laughs> I only want Carter's life and he free. So. With that haste rune. Are you going to make a rotation here on Mikoto? It doesn't quite look like he's running back to his mid lane. Where he wants to be. Quop is TPing away. But they cancelled the TP away. He's not going to be able to stop this die bottom. The ink swell, it does do a fair amount of damage. But with the shackle, they stop it in almost instantaneously. Looks like they just don't want to commit under that tower. 
Worth noting that Phoenix Chaboa, he is here. He is behind Makoto. And with their disruption, they do have level 6. Have the Sonic Wave if they want to use it. And they do use it. Blinking forward as well to use the Scream of Pain. And that's an easy kill there. Nice rotation for Phoenix Chaboa. And Tusk, he came to mid lane, but unfortunately isn't able to set anything up. Or save his OD. For my glory. So, Fabian, they get the science on the Shadow Shaman. They're trying to go forward the rotation of the Quap. But again, Kang, indecisive. If they do get the kill thanks to the rotation, but it means that Jockham, he is going to be able to get away because there is no disruption. Nothing to cancel his TP. He has to make up his mind, and he went for the disruption that wasn't ending in time. So Inkswell kind of wasted there. And Kazek, the two in this with the shards, they've caught in Felicia Boa. Is he going to disrupt himself? He is, but I still think he is going to be dead as soon as that ends. And our fears are proved correct. Meanwhile, in this mid lane, nothing up to say. Just landing that dagger spam. Actually taken two in the Scream of Pain. Hasn't got the four in the Shadow Strike. But is he? Is it going to be enough to kill off Makoto? He's taking a lot. There is the Sanity's Eclipse. But he doesn't actually drop the hammer. Because he only stole four intelligence from the Scream of Pain. And now he needs to be really careful not to eat another Shadow Strike. Otherwise, I think he's pretty much dead here. With the Astro Presman, I think with the Sanity on top of that, he will kill him. No, it's not quite enough and nothing to say. He's going to be able to fill up his bottle. He's just going to be fine. And that's all thanks to that infused raindrops, I'm pretty damn sure. Look at Queen of Pain's intelligence versus the Sodis, and there's not that much of a multiplier difference. So Sanity's Eclipse actually even wasted there. Okay, that's Zeku too. Hide behind the trees. They do get slow on Fervium. But is he going to be able to turn this around? It looks like he doesn't want to do it. He's walking back as soon as they see Felicia Bro. And now on top of the Banish. On top of the Zeku. But look at that. That was a nice snowball to dodge the Inkstar Child. And now we saw this again. The levels in the tag team with three of them. They do get the Solar Trumps in there. No, there's no disruption. So they've got the slow. And I think that is probably a dead disruptor. Probably a dead disruptor. Yes, with the last hit coming out from Jockham. I see for you a future full of death. Uh, sorry, I haven't really had much time to update my results command. Uh, if you ask the chat, they will tell you about what has happened today. So, uh, we're at 9 minutes. Let's have a look at the net worth. You can see the Tide Hunter is the number one net worth. As he completed his Vladimir, he's actually built a pipe versus the magic damage coming out from the Shadow Shaman as well as this Darkseer. I think that's a fairly heads up call. They do have the ultimate here on the quad back online in the mid lane. Middle tower is under attack. If they want to use it, but look at this. They're going in. They do get the snowball. They bring him forward. They have the shackle if they want to use it. And do they have quite enough? They do. Actually, the kill, I think, from the shards. But now Felicia Bowie, he came in. He tried to save him, but a nice back you back by FSB. Who's he going to disrupt? I don't think it quite matters. I don't think you're going to be alive. Even with the slow of the wall as well as the shackles. Double iron shells, and that's a nice kill. Two nice kills there for the side of Boom ID. I'm worth so much and Fervian. More. He's been left to his own devices. He's going to be able to get his level 6. And that's when he truly comes online. Instant summon of those birds. Going to start sieging this bottom tower. But there's Queen of Pain. But. Soul Assumption. They do have the snowball. So they know where she's gone to hide. There is not another uh, blink for another few seconds. He uses the Scream of Pain to push them away. And they don't quite have the vision in the trees over here. They did manage to kill off Felicia Boa and FSB. He did get disrupted. They are going to kill Yokam with that stroke of fate while they retreat here with FSB. But now Kang, are they able to get off the slow? It doesn't quite look like it. Velo, tanky with this hood of defiance. He's not the one they want to commit upon. The Queen of Plain did blow her ultimate, but it did save her life. I think it's pretty much worth it. Dead disrupted. Dead he has the disruption skill. Radiance middle tower has Over here, they're trying to go on nothing else to say again. They have the snowball. It goes forward. He has the shards. It blocks him in in front of him. They have the slow of the tag team. Are they able to get off another stun? 
It doesn't quite look like it. And with the ink spell coming in, the Hex is not enough. And that's a big ravage. It's onto all of them. And it looks like Kazakh too. He's going to pay the price. Is Furvion able to get away? He TPs away. But with the Lucid Beam from Nico Baby. They do manage to kill off this Visage. And we talked about this. If Boom ID have a rough early game, if they lose a few fights, they have the most timing dependent lineup I've ever seen. The so Felicia Boa, he's going to keep this top lane pushed. With the help of his poisons, that's three stacks as well as disruption. They allow him to get four stacks. That's a whole amount of damage there. They don't have the ultimate on the court, but with the Shadow Strike, I'm pretty sure he's dead. And even using the ultimate there to purge off him trying to escape with that. Do they have enough? They do kill nothing else to say. Those low levels in blink not pay off. Only one level in the blink. So yes, as I was saying, the Shadow Demon, the Demonic Purge purged off his sprint ability. So he wasn't able to escape on the darks here. But they do get a nice trade onto this quap. So how is our Luna farming? She's building her Dragon Lance. Not a Mask of Madness build here for Nico, Nico Baby. It's not in my nature, but... And on this bottom lane, it looks like Joachim is being hunted down by Velo. How long till next gush? He has it, but he hides in the trees. And now they're actually thinking about trying to turn this around. The Darkseer has come in. They're dropping the wards, but Velo, he's not that afraid of these wards at all. This is a big tanky tide with his Kraken shell. But now they have the wall. They have... The damage of the birds is it enough? They drop one bird, but the disruption is onto this visage and on this back line. Kang, he's coming. He's going to be able to kill off this Shadow Shaman, but they're not able to kill off this side. He is just so tanky. It looks like Fervin, he's the one losing his life. He's silenced up, he's purged up, and he goes down to nothing else to say. The Scream of Pain. And they were the one making the aggressive move, but are they able to get the trade? They do kill the cop, but they have lost their visions. He does have the birds still alive. And now with double iron shell, with the pure damage on Makoto, they finally do kill off that Tidehunter. Makoto finishing off his Midas as well. All this time, Nico Baby left to his own devices, has the Dragon Lance completed. Three points in the Moonglaves. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And FSB, they're actually farming up the enemy jungle. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Nico Baby, not going to overcommit for this push. Just pushing the wave and back off. That's what we like to see. Playing safe on our carries. And in this mid lane, Quap versus Darkseer. I mean, he takes a whole load of damage from that Shadow Strike. I think you could probably kill him if you let forward. He needs to be very careful. I think he should be building into a pipe here. And he is here on the docks here. Fervian has the helm of the Dominator building his own pipe after the medallion. Radiant structures and Luna fortified. with Velo behind him on Nico, baby. He doesn't feel so afraid. Take this tier one tower. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Makoto still pushing in this tower, but as we Radiant said, not a lot of tower damage coming out from this OD. But actually, you know, he is hitting fairly fast with the Hannah Midas and with the birds. It looks like they're just going to be able to take this tower. Killing Do they spree. see Kang? Oh, Nico, baby, they run down the Shadow Shaman. He even oh, used wards for that defense. But it looks like Kang is going to be the rebuttal kill. Killing spree. And a tier 2 tower. But with the Luna, I wouldn't be surprised if they get a tier 2 tower of their own. But with the Darkseer TPing back as well as the Tusk, they might be trying to bait this overcommitment here from Nico, baby. They see where he is. Are they going to see Kang in the trees? The shards, they do miss. And Nico Baby is able to escape. The scan does hit. And the wall, it misses. But it was a bit optimistic. To be honest. Bavian is farming up this enemy jungle. Making a good pace of it. But look how far he is. He's the lowest of all the cores in the entire game. He said we didn't want this physician to have a rough time. And it looks like that's exactly what he had. Top tower is under attack. Double damage. Are they going to get the D ward in time? Yes, they are. But they now know where this ward is, at least for the side of WG. 
the Koto, the one really holding Boom into this game, is going to have the BKB at a fairly rapid pace. Fervian, Medallion completed, so they might be able to kill off this Tidehunter at long last if they do catch him out. So, Nico, maybe they're taking this tier one mid tower. tower using tower. Velo to tank it. They have their whole entire team here. FSB, does he see them? He's just surging himself forward. But they get the stomp actually with the Centaur creep as well as the vacuum back. Do they have enough to kill Velo? Uh, with that pipe, no, taking no damage at all from that soul assumption as well as that urn. And a nice 200 gold sniped off by that Lucent Beam. Those Helm of the Domination creeps sure are juicy. He gets rid of the science, but they leap forward. And I think FSB, he pops the mech. But with the Ravage, he's not going to be able to get away. The Sonic Wave, as well as the Lunar Eclipse, it doesn't really connect onto much. Zekatoot, is he going to be able to escape? They did get vision of him. But I think they just really want this tier 1 tower, as well as taking that Darkseer kill. Makoto is TPing in to try and defend this. They get the Tide in the air. They know there's no Ravage. The Disruption, they need to get rid of that science really fast on Makoto. And look at that, the Astral, it's not quite enough. With the Sanity's Eclipse, are they able to kill nothing else to say? He has no mana, so I think they will be able to kill off this crop. But Tidehunter or Velo, he's able to walk away just free. And they did lose that tier 1 tower for the commitment of all their ultimates. So I think you're fairly okay with that if you're inside of WG. Boom, I think they were looking for slightly more, but they are going right into this rage pit. They do have Medallion. I think you're going to need more than just your birds. But luckily, Tag Team does work on Roshan. That tag tag team does work on Roshan. Um, yeah, there we go. That's what I was talking about. I get the feeling they know this is happening. Kang sitting on that high ground over there. Tidehunter, they know he doesn't have Ravage. And that's why they wanted to go for this. Roshan is getting pretty low. They need the extra damage of that tag team. But it looks like they're able to go onto Kang. But they need to be careful of that ink swell. The stun, it does land on Kazek too, but are they finally able to kill Roshan just in time? They do kill Roshan, and the Aegis it is taken up by this OD. They do kill Felicia Bro with that soul assumption, and now on this back line, they're chasing forward, trying to catch more with these birds, but no, they're just going to back off to safety and heal back up. They don't want to waste the Aegis already on Makoto. Uh, please, please use your Midas. It's this inefficiency. Everyone count along with me. One, two... Three. Like, this just this inefficiency. It hurts me, man. Hurts. Uh. Oh. Oh, God. It's a passive Midas. It's a passive Midas, guys. Oh, he uses that last, but... Way too late. Anyway, Shadow Shaman is in this top lane. He... He looks like he decided against Seath Lens and... Because he got so much farm, is actually building his Blink Dagger right away. And I take that back as soon as he picks up the Void Stone. But th he could have had the Blink Dagger, man. Dyer, so, Kazekitut hiding here in the trees. Dyer do successfully get a scan, so they know what's going on. The Disruption. This is on Fervian. But are they able to catch more Velo? He does have Ravage, but she wants to blow it. There is no Aegis here. They pop the Quop ulti and as well as that Phantom's Embrace. That is going to allow them to kill Fervian. Just getting a bit too deep there for that 20 minute rune. And being caught out on this visage again. Look how far behind he is on Fervian. This is their carry. Yeah, but like, come on, how important is that experience versus the money and having it off cooldown? Like, when it takes 20 seconds, it's honestly not worth it, and you should just use it on a range creep. Like, if it takes like 5 seconds, then yes, you go look for a big creep. So, nothing to say, building an Orchid Rush. That's kind of interesting, we don't see that very often. But over here, they have the Disruption as well as the Purge. He's going to try to get away Felicia Bow. He needs to get his ultimate off onto FSB. Nice vacuum back. Look, he's just not committing the ultimate here. And now they're taking a lot of damage from those Lunar Illusions. He needs to be really careful there on Felix Shabba. A dominating performer. 
And look at this, the rotation of Kids Execute. He got him low and they finished him off. And look, he has a Lunar Illusion. This is all he's ever wanted on this Darkseer. He's looking for the Luna, but Luna has TP'd right out to safety in this top lane. But over here, Makoto does manage to get the Astro Imprisonment on this Tidehunter before she eats a Ravage to the face. BKB online as well for the Tower World of Arrow. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So Velo has his hood as well as his Vlads. But Fervian, Solo Crest, and he's even building the Agnus Scepter. We missed the kill on to the Shadow Shaman, but it looks like that was the Orca reveal. Or this Queen of Pain. And once you're orcated up, there's nothing you can do on a poor Shadow Shaman. But worth pointing out, he does have his Blink Dang completed. So they do have some really good initiation for the side of Boom ID if they want to group up together. This game's still even in the net worth, but I feel... This game being even at this point of time is definitely in favor of WG. I just, we just really haven't felt the impact Double of this visit. And it was the last pick of the drop. Bello, he goes forward. That's a massive ravage. They didn't manage to get off the BKB. The Lunar Ultimate as well as the Sonic Wave on top of all of them. Are they able to kill the OD? She is BKB'd. But Nico, baby, he doesn't decide to go for it. And now Bello, they've caught him. They brought back on the Darkseer. Do they have enough damage? They do with that pure damage coming out from the OD as well as the DD rune. So everything committed from the side of WG. And I'm not sure how much they got out of it. It looked like a very good wombo combo. But they just didn't quite finish anyone except for that Darkseer. And Darkseer instantly brought back. Yeah, Darkseer. The only kill after all the ultimate spent for the side of WG. And with that, I wouldn't be uh, surprised if they start pushing very, very hard. Shadow Shaman not even committing the wards for this. He wants to save them for the tier 3 tower. That is the Aegis expiring here on the Outworld Varro though. So they might be a bit more cautious of this. But I'm not sure if they will be. They know there's no Ravage. They have to hit this timing. So they're going to go for a push. The Shaman wards instantly laid out. The Glyph isn't there for the side of And that's a nice wall. And keeping them back with the shards. They've killed the Shadow Demon Hill. Buyback almost instantaneously. But they've taken the tier 3 tower. And now they're focusing. These melee racks. Are oh, Boom ID going to do this? Are they going to hit their timing? Bello, he has no Ravage. He's trying to kill off these wards. But he's Ghost Scepted himself up. So he it isn't taking the right clicks. And the pure damage here of Makoto. But well, it looks like they have managed to stemmy the bleeding here for the side of WG. And Boom ID, they're just going to retreat. So no melee racks. But they did take tier 3 tower. So FSB, they disrupt him as he's surging away. I don't think you're going to be quite getting away. He's orchided. He's taken the Shadow Strike as well as that and leaping forward on the cop. Even with your pipe, I'm pretty sure you're dead. And especially to that level 4 Lucent Beam of this Nico Baby Luna. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. So, Nico, baby. Look at that. The shards keeping him back for a short period of time. But they know they have no darks here. There is no vacuum rule to be able to cast this. And look how much fast they push with the Luna. Forcing out this Dire Glyph. They do have Ravage back online on Velo. So, he's very happy doing this frontline tanking. The shards, it does catch in Nico, baby, if they want to go commit for this. But with no vacuum wall, they're also going to lose their tier 3. And now the base open. This is what you don't want versus a Luna. Because these glaives, they're just going to bounce all around. They go forward, they get the hex. And the Ravage, that's a very quick 
kill on the Shadow Shaman, as well as connect to me. Goto pops his BKB, but Velo, he's not able to touch him through this Ghost Scepter. Now the Ghost Set has faded. They do have the Shackles, but they need to be careful. Uh, the Disruption was instantaneously and the Grimstoke Ultimate, as well as the Double Sights. But Koto, he's going to go down as well. He has no BKB. they rolling both forwards. The Shadow Shaman is dying to this Lunar Eclipse, and so is the Tusk. There's no Barak, and I think that's probably just game, if I'm well and truly honest. They're going to take this Lunar Axe. They haven't taken any more teeth. That's a nice vacuum wall there by FSB, but I don't think they care. Apparently, they do care. They're just cleaning up the illusions before they take these take these melee racks. Look at this. Even using Lunar Illusions. They get the silence as well as the Grimstroke Phantom's Embrace. But unfortunately, they don't have any other tier 2s taken, so they're not able to take more racks, even with all these kills for the side of WG. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Nico Baby is disrupted up. Just getting these illusions, it really does remind me of like three patches ago where it was all Lunar Shadow Demons. But look, already the silence onto the OD Velo is so tanky. This Ghost Scepter was an amazing purchase by him. It means that the OD isn't able to steal lots of intelligence from him. I feel like we haven't seen a good Santee's Eclipse yet. Hi, right, game. So, Sergio Ford is FSB, just gets one rune and he's going to take the next one. Oh, it looks like he is actually leaving that Invis rune for someone. This Fervian Visage. Oh, sorry about that. This Fervian Visage still not coming into its own. And instantly they figure that Roshan is up. They have the minus armor thanks to the gush and just so much that at right click damage thanks to this Lunar Blessing. And, and Butterfly as well here for Nico baby. This Dyer does successfully get a scan. They do have Vacuum Wall. They don't have a blink about it. But are they going to get there in time? I don't think they are. And look at this. Nothing else to say on this back line. They vacuum him out of the pit. But Nico baby is able to pick up the Aegis as well as the cheese. And it looks like that is a dead dark here. And the roll forward over here onto Kazek too. He's caught on the back line. A nice ultimate for the Sonic Wave. But this Tusk isn't long for this world. Velo, are they able to kill him? He does have Ravage. They drop the Sanity's Eclipse. And they are able to just kill off that Tide Humper. They do take down the Aegis as well on the Luna. But Kang, he's eating these wards. He needs to be really careful. He's standing right next to the Shadow Shaman Serpent Wards. They've actually managed to catch up the Corp. He's dead. And the Lucent Beam, it's not doing that much work over here because he was empowered. Uh, caught in the Astral Prison. And this is an amazing fight for Boom ID. Boom ID. They took the Aegis. They took the fight. I, I don't understand what just happened. I'm really hoping we get a fight recap of that. And look at that. Even the buyback from the Grimstroke was enough to save them. And it was a 5k gold swing towards the side of Boomer to eat. And they're going to force buybacks almost instantaneously. Um, force, but they did use Shaman Wards. So that's going to kind of limit their push. But, and I think Aghanim Scepter is Radiant on the Courier here. It is on the Courier here for Visage. So expect the birds to Salmon. So three birds now. They do pop Glyphs. Are they going to buy back on the Luna? They do have Ravage. That was something that wasn't extended in that last fight. And with the AoE Shadow Psych, it does a lot of damage to these birds as well. But they are able to get their own melee racks here. They, they, he needs to drop the birds. There is no resummon because he summoned them just to get the three. Bervian, he's going to try and get out on his own hero. But Quop jumps forward. They do get the Hex. So are they able to kill him? It doesn't look like it. It looks like there was just a harass. And he's TPing out from the T's. They are TPing correctly where he was. But there's going to be no catch except for over here. On this Shadow Shaman Chochem, he is not going to survive. The Orchid, as well as the Scream of Pain, vacuum to put Felicia Bow on the high ground as he runs away on FSB, stealing that rune. So, Boom ID, take one big fight, take a melee barracks. That was not expected, if I'm honest. But over here, boom, 
Fabian, FSB, Velo. This is the Ghost Scepter. We've seen this before. But he's able to force himself to the high ground. But can they give vision? Oh, he's already used Snowball. Because otherwise they could have given vision and all got inside the Snowball. With the birds. So, Velo, as we said before, they have to do something about this Ghost Scepter. Either a Yules or an Alifier. I think it's really important. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to kill this Tide when they want to. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. They are grouping up now on WG Unity. They have all their abilities off cooldown. They have Ravage if they want to use it. But the side of Boom ID, they are smoked up. They don't have a resummon on the birds. So there's only two of them, actually. And their smoke breaks. They see the side. He goes for it. He gets Ravage on this Darkseer. Uh, actually, look at that. He leapt forward on the OD. But he was caught. And Shadow Shaman Wards. They've got the Hex. But that OD ultimate doing a lot of work. They tried saving Nico Baby with that disruption. But I don't think it's going to be enough. But he pops the cheese. But he's eating a lot under this ward. Under his own illusion. They do kill a fellow fellow Nico Baby. Is he going to be okay? It looks like the Luna has managed to escape with that TP away. I'm not quite sure what happened there. But that was still a big fight for the side of Boom ID. They committed Ravage. They, but they killed the Tide Hunter. And they're all alive for the side here. We can see they brought back on the Darks here once again. But with no Ravage, I don't think they are going to be afraid to push high ground. Yeah, he committed the Ravage just to kill off the Darkseer as well as the Quap ulti. They have three birds up again and it looks like they are taking more map control. Controlling the Shrines. After taking that tier 3 and Rax, Shrines are oh, open and fair game for the side of Boom ID. So, Kazekitu has an Invis Rune, has the Blink Dagger, so he is able to save people with that Blink Forward Snowball, if he wants to be able to do that. But three of his side are sitting over here. Shadow Shaman building a Blink Dagger, not going for that Aghanim's Refresher, that he's not getting that all-out push. That doesn't feel it's that stage of the game yet. Queen of Pain, how are we doing item-wise on you? Has an Orchid and the full BKB completed. But if he shows himself, Joachim, he is sitting in the trees over here. It looks like they are going to see Kazakitu. And will he know something's up on the Queen of Pain? Knowing, seeing that this guy is coming in. He snowballs forward, he gets the shards. Is he able to escape? The slow doesn't connect, but the slow of the gush does. And now he's purged up. I think that is a very dead. He gets the punch in the air. But the Inkswell does connect. And again, another Lucent Beam kill for this Nico Baby Luna. So, Fabian. They're taking down this last shrine and they're also going to siege the last tier two. I'm not sure what they're waiting for. Are they waiting for the next Aegis before push? But just look how stacked this Lunar is. Butterfly, Hurricane Pike. They're not going to be able to kill her. Even with this full Assault Karas, soon on the Visage himself. Kang. Just getting that Glimmer Cake, one of the issues with the five position Grim Choke is he doesn't get anywhere near that Hex, doesn't get near that Blink. And Nico Baby, building the Satanic next. Butterfly Satanic, BKB. I'm curious that he doesn't have the man to style this game. I feel that would have helped them push out their lanes as well as Wreak Havoc and the team fights. Radiant are scanning. I mean, Blade Mail got nerfed a few patches ago. They increased the mana that it takes to activate. This ward here, it's not going to scout them out because they are smoked. Darkseer does go for the pause. I wonder what is up with FBS. Oh, this is turning into a long game. Okay. 
Looks like the pause wasn't that long. With the unpause coming out from Felicia Burr. Our world of art has his hex completed now. I and Yasha. Radiance this mind is really paying dividends as we get later and later into the game. As long as he doesn't wait like he did last time to use it. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. I mean, Manta, you know, just for the stats, for the extra push. For the extra speed of the Yasha. Also, it massively increases Dyer's your farm because you send your illusions to the split. Because you can just send your illusions to farm jungles to push out the lanes. It just feels pretty nice having Manta on it. So that's the, sh that's the last shrine being taken there on the map. Both teams lost all four of their shrines. And again, look at this. They're just sitting on the high ground. Have we seen this before or not? Just controlling this high ground area is the objective for the side of WG. But this game's still so even. Have a look at the net worth. But if you look at Total Pass, it actually thinks... It's only slightly in favor of WG Unity, where I would say it's much more favored due to the fact that they have a Luna going this late. So, is enemy one going to be caught out by the smoke of... Warriors Gaming. It looks like they're heading towards up here. Luna Smoke might pop on this Shadow Shaman. It, they do pop Velo Smoke. They now realize where he is. He gets the Hex instantly onto the screen of pain. But I think you're a very dead Shadow Shaman, if I'm dead honest. All the meanwhile, they have to defend this top lane. They don't have Rax there, so it is pushing in. Roshan is up. Both teams probably should know about it by now because it's been a very long period since we last saw... And Aegis. And they are now pinging it on Velo. And I wouldn't be surprised for them to just run into the pit. They realize it's up. But there is Kazakitu. As well as FSB. Now remember Darkseer. Very good round the pit. If he gets one of those great vacuum walls. They are trying to set. To do it. Nico baby. He's finally made it into the pit. But look at this. The Shadow Poison. With the cooldown talent I think. Yeah Shadow Poison cooldown. He's just able to spam it, giving vision absolutely everywhere. And they're not able to make it into the pit thanks to this Shadow Poison. But over here, he has already used the Disruption. But a nice Ravage from Velo. It does catch onto this Darkseer. He does pop his Greaves, so he's going to live. A nice Vacuum Wall onto three of them. But nothing to say. He's on this back line. He does manage to kill off this Darkseer. He doesn't have buyback, but Ravage is down. And now they're chasing forward. They get the Hex onto this Shadow Demon. But they're not quite able to kill him thanks to Glimmer Cape. Luna. Doesn't have the Aegis, but does have a Reva. BKB pop, but so was it by Nico Baby. They toss him into the air. They throw down the Shaman Wards, but they haven't managed to kill anyone at all for the side WG. They finally kill the Shadow Demon, but buy back of the Tusk. Now, finally, are they going to be able to kill Kang? But no, the Glimmer Cake just saving absolutely everyone. So that was a very messy fight for the side of Boom ID. Going in favor of WG, I'm pretty damn sure. But Roshan still at half health. And they're not going to be able to take it for either side. I do not think. Look at this Fervian just getting some flying vision with one of his birds. Nothing to save. Fervian's birds, they go in, they get the snowball. And are they able to get the Roshan? Roshan is killed and it's picked up by Velo. Of all people, the Tidehunter. That leap in unsuccessful there by the two supports of Boom ID. They wanted to steal the Aegis, but unfortunately, they just were not there in time. Double damage. Blessings upon a loyal warrior. So, this Quop has her Shivas, has the cheese. When she hits level 25, she can get that Scream of Fear. Or even the Spell Block, which is quite good versus the Astral versus the Shadow Shaman as well. But it's worth pointing out, Nico Baby has a DD and the rest of the side. They don't have Ravage for 32 seconds, but they do have the Refresher Shard. And there we go, that Ghost Scepter, nice Vacuum Wall. 
Is it going to keep Nico Baby back? They do have this lovely Lunar Illusion. But a bit of a miscommunication there. The Soul Assumption not hitting thanks to that Astral. And Nico Baby taking a lot of damage from his own Illusion. I think say needs to be careful, but does have the cheese. Nice Grimstroke ultimate. They do get off the double Lucid Beam. But the Hex on the back line, the Quap ulti, it, it hasn't managed to kill anyone. The Visage, he is being saved by the OT. The Ravage, it connects onto three of them. Are they able to kill anyone off the Visage? He had died. He buys back one instantaneously. There's no buyback on the Darks here. Because X2 running away. Venom, he's refreshed, but he doesn't isn't able to get out the Ravage. But remember, this is the man with the Aegis. Do they have another Ravage if they want to use it here on Velo? And they do. They use the Ravage and they run forward with that Eclipse. Are they able to kill off the OD? He puts himself under in the Astral Imprisonment. And with that, Nico Baby, they do manage to clear up this mid lane of Rax. The Hex as well as the Shards. But the fourth up, getting Grimstroke just over the Shards. Long range Shackle, thanks to that Ether Lens. And I'm pretty sure that is a dead Grimstroke. But you're going to have to pay for that with your own life, Kizak. You're getting a bit greedy for that kill. Whew. So things looking really grim for the side of Boom ID, if I'm honest. They only have one lane of barracks left, and this is versus Luna, who's broken into your base. Invisibility. How is our Shadow Shaman doing? He's still building this BKB. He's pretty damn far away from it. Needs another 1,300 gold bouts. And Velo, we saw him use the Refresher Shard and now he has his own Refresher Orb. So if they wait for next Aegis, they could possibly have three Ravages. But I think they might be content just to go with two. Realizing that they are 13k gold ahead of the side of Boom ID. Gold for me. So, over here, is the whole side of Boom. They're sticking together. They need to play it safe. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a look at the buybacks. And the only one they have left is on the OD. And look at that Quop just breaking the smokes. They don't have vision of where nothing to say when. But they have managed to catch and kill the Grimstroke. And that does get them a gem. They'll be happy with that. But nothing to say. He's actually popped his BKB. But seeing the whole side here, I don't think he's going to want to continue fighting. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Makoto running forward, hoping to catch some people. But they do get the purge off onto him, and now nothing to say. That's a lot of damage there onto Makoto. And the Sonic Wave, it's not quite enough. It looks like it didn't really connect. So now, purge down. Nothing else to say. His Sonic Wave down, but they are oh, just farming the birds now. At this stage of the game, nice hacks. Are they going to be able to kill him? The long range shackle. And that's an easy kill there. Nothing else to say. The Ravage on the back lines. He has the refresh orb if he wants to use it. The vacuum wall. He refreshes. Is he able to get off the Ravage? He does. Just had the mana for it. Nico Baby. He's TPing away while using the kits. But they cancel away the TP with that Warriors Punch. And now Hex. Luna going down. Nico Baby. He's going to go down. And they just killing off illusions now. So a bad fight. And Velo. He's used double Ravage. You're not getting away. Go sets down. He forced himself to the high ground, but they don't care about that. The birds, they can follow you absolutely everywhere. Your Kraken shell, it's just not quite enough. So a massive successful fight by the side of Boom ID. And with that, are they going to look to push? Shadow Demon just collecting a bunch of the runes here. You're having trouble with Quop. Okay, we'll try ignoring what Nothing to Say is doing. So, Fervian, he is the only one currently pushing, except for the OD, but this mid lane is pushing in. Did he? He didn't manage to get the catch here on Felicia Boa. 
So he didn't manage to get the Hex, because otherwise I think that probably would have been a dead shadow someone. They do get the Grimstroke ultimate. They are linking both of them up, but they do get rid of the Phantoms just in time. Makoto, however, pretty low. He's going to have to get away and heal on his Tranquil Boots. But Fervian, he pushes so fast, has the Assault Karas, has all three birds. And it looks like they're going to even up this Rack's disadvantage. And we talked about this Hex, the last hit coming out from <laughs> this OD. Of that arcane orb was enough to finish them off. And they just don't want to buy back on this Luna. My thanks. So with that, the Rax advantage, it is even up. This game is just going back and forth, back and forth. As you can see in this net worth. As well as the win percentage. And I forgot they have Shaman Wards for this final push. They really have to do something about this. Do they have Ravage? Not for 24 seconds. Are they going to be Mega Creep? Nothing to say. He's blinking in. He does have the fear. But they're just focusing this melee barracks. They know that's all they want. They're using the sun. Oh, the ward's going to get it. A nice vacuum wall. Focusing the wards up. Nothing to say. He's blinked in. But Velo. That ultimate, it does absolutely nothing. And are they able to get this? And that's Mega Creeps for the side of Boom ID. Have they managed to do this? This is versus Luna. So one of the hardest people to push against. But they killed. Nothing to say. This co-op has no buyback. What is going on? Boom ID, they were 15k gold behind. WG Unity, have you fed away this lead? Luna popping the Eclipse. The ultimate coming out from the OD. It didn't manage to kill anyone, but they've hexed up the Luna. The Ravage Luna does have buyback. He uses it. That's the first Ravage. 22 seconds until the next one. OD, they try to save him, but he's not going to be fine. And now these birds, they have all four of them, but they're just going to have the back away from the throne. And they kill off the Shadow Shaman. There's no buyback on him. Sorry, I don't know where that happened. We can actually find out. Shadow Shaman, he died over here. But with Mega Creeps established, no buyback on the co-op. They don't have buyback on their Shadow Shaman. But it looks like they know this is their time to fight. For the side of Boom IT. They don't have buybacks. They don't have anything. They're going to force the OD buyback. And try and win this game. Just go for the throne. The throne is exposed for them. They don't have to get Megas of their own. And with this DD on Nico, maybe that might just be a possibility. But look at this, Kazekutu on the back line. They do see Nico Baby now. They did manage to scout that out. And look at this, Tusk. He's just trying to stop them getting there. He's just playing an annoyance to spoil spoiler. But Nico Baby, they do pop the glyph. They do get this Lunar Illusion. That's really important to help them clear through things. That's a big Ravage. He has already used the Refresher. That's the only Ravage that will be coming out, but they've hexed up the Luna. Do they have the Chainsaw? I don't know if they have the damage of that. He has Satanic. He'll be healing up here on Nico Baby. They've already brought back on the OD. Are they able to kill off Nico Baby? They are. There's no buyback on the Luna. And with that, that's probably game. They don't have anywhere pushing these Mega Creeps without their Luna. They jump forward, but Kang, he's going to die as well. Velo doesn't have Ravage. And GG, it looks like it was called. Bello, he TPs away, but they're not able to stop that TP. But look at this. All the creeps, they have to buy back. This throne is getting very, very low. And without their Luna, she was their main push. Velo is able to do it with the Anchor Smash. I wouldn't be surprised if he thinks about building an Agnum Scepter to defend against these, against these Mega Creeps. But it looks like the side of Boom ID, they finally shown up. Their, their net worth is almost even. But they know there's no Luna for 82 seconds. They really have to try and make something happen. Shadow Shaman will have his wards if he wants them. If, is he? Does he have money for Boots of Travel? He does. He buys Boots of Travel and he's coming right in. If they lay down these wards in front of the throne, I'm pretty sure that is just it. There is no Glyph. And there is no Ravage. And so Shadow Shaman, he blinks forward. He needs to micro the wards. There you go. They micro the wards. They're microing the birds. Almost everything. There is no Glyph. And that is probably just GG. Boom ID winning game number two. In spectacular fashion. What throws by WG Unity. They won't be happy with this loss. I will show you this kind of thing. Oh, um, hopefully it will sh take me to it. There we go. So let us have a look. Wow, I cannot believe Boom ID won that game. Luna had Satanic. Luna had Deadless as well as BKB. Hit like a truck. But unfortunately, look at this graph. Real mountains here. We go 